Welcome one and all, I'm Decoy. I'm back with more cool and unique camp locations. You all already know the deal. Spots that have workbenches or that sort of thing, structures. Maybe creepy cult type spot like we're at now. Because that's how I roll. Now around this area you will find several dead corpses of cultists. But past that there's not a whole lot that you can loot here. This location is all about the the cult vibe. And if you're a cultist, you're probably going to love this spot. Now I do envision uh, maybe an altar right there in the middle. And then let the human sacrifices begin. Yeah, this spot's perfect for that sort of thing. Now you'll find this right up here. It's close to Mothman on your map. I know that's not the name of the town. We just get past it, people. All right, Mothman is in way bigger letters than the town name, so it's Mothman now. And you must come to accept that. Let's move on to Toxic Valley. And I'm going to keep it real simple this time. I kind of overdid it last week. I got to bring us back down to earth a little bit. So, we got a nice little tent here. And inside you'll find a couple Mr. Fuzzies, a whole bunch of board games. And then you got a couple of sleeping bags. As usual, I don't suggest that you sleep in the sleeping bags. Not a good idea. Now you do get a cooking station and a couple other little things. But overall, this is a real simple location. But if you are looking at building your camp at one of these uh, power pylons, it's a fairly good spot. Just for the fact that it's actually at a unique camp location. And you're also somewhat close to a train station. You're not super close, but you're within arm's reach. That's not that far away. You can make it. I believe in you. You just gotta, gotta lay off the funnel cakes. Start working it out. So that's gonna wrap up that area. Let's move on to the ash heap. I had to think about it for a second. I was like, I know I messed this up a couple weeks ago. Don't say the wrong name. So, down here, we do have a, I want to say like a couple little warehouses, but it's more like a warehouse and a barn or some variation. Now, I know I had one person comment and complain about me using the green light. Uh, I don't want to be mean, but you can get over it. I like the green light. I like it a lot. It gives me a, a, lot, of, a lot of good memories of previous fallouts. Somewhere, I only had the option of the green light. I've grown accustomed to it. So inside this building, you do have a decent amount of stuff that you can loot. Plenty of holes in the walls, some holes in the floors, or technically the roof. Eh, I mean, it's awesome, but I wish there wasn't so much debris blocking up the place. I think it would... It would go a long ways if we could, you know, just grab a shovel and start clearing out some of this dirt so we could have more of that flat space. Now, you do get some uh, glue and some screws, because everybody loves screws. You need screws. You can never have enough. But honestly, I do need to warn you about one thing with this location. While I haven't seen anything specifically spawn at this location, it does seem like things will spawn further down the road and then walk here. Which also might be good because you could technically set up an ambush for them with turrets and whatnot, traps, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, I think the time that I came here for this recording... There was a bunch of super mutants walking up the road, and then there was a death claw nearby. So, just something to be aware of. Always got to worry about enemies at unique camp locations. But you'll find this right here. Also, somewhat close to a train station, which I'm always a big fan of. Now, let's head over to the Savage Divide. To a pretty cool camp location that also makes me just a little bit jealous. 
jealous because I would love to be able to build these little campers wherever I wanted. I'm pretty sure I would end up building like a trailer park of sorts and it would be amazing. Now this camp spot does feature a really lovely view. You got a couple chairs looking out so you can enjoy it but we'll come back to that view later because there is more to that than meets the eye. You do have a few wood piles outside of your camper and inside you do have a radio and it does work. You also get a weapon workbench. Free workbenches are awesome. Other than that, not a whole lot going on in here. Kind of wish the debris wasn't in the way. But eh, you can't have everything, right? We head over towards the Jeep. Of course, you've got the toolbox, but inside the back of the Jeep is a hunting rifle. Now, let's head back over here. Now, back that way, if you can, you can make out that little building. You can't camp over there, but there is some food and stuff growing over there that you can run over and loot whenever you want if you're camping here. Now, the cool thing about this spot is further down the cliff, there's more stuff. So if you're camping here, you can, depending on where you place your camp, you should be able to fully take advantage of the lower spot and the camper up top. Let me make my way down the cliff here. And down here, you do have a little bit of junk. But you do get your cooking station, a food container, and a chem box. And a couple of sleeping bags. Eh, no big deal. But I found this and I went, oh man, this would be a pretty cool spot to camp at. Especially if you get you some stairs going up. Connect the two. Be pretty freaking cool. So you'll find this location right over here. You're within arm's reach of both Top of the World and Harper's Ferry, and it keeps you pretty much in the center of the map, which is one of the other things I really like in a camp. I want to be kind of centralized so that I can fast travel to almost anywhere without having a massive cost. Now let's head over to the Mire, where I've got a nice little farmstead type thing going on. I, I don't know. I don't know what exactly to call this, but there are several houses here. And a hot tub. Make sure you take a dip in the hot tub. You know you want to. I mean, the water's a little dirty, but you'll survive. Okay, maybe you won't. You might get a disease and it might kill you. We're not going to talk about that. Now, the houses are partially destroyed and overgrown, but honestly, that's something that should be expected out here in the mire. Now both houses do feature a fair amount of loot. I mean it's nothing extreme that you're gonna flip out about and go oh my god it's a blast radius board game. I've waited my whole life for this. But you can place your camp here, have some pre-built structures, also, I'm confused by this right here. I'm not sure why they walled off that area and then gave up halfway through. So, if you move here, you might be able to take advantage of that and just keep wrapping it around. This place does have fake beds, though. And it makes me scratch my head and wonder why they are even here. Other than they confuse me. Now, this location does have a few things of a ginseng root. If that's something you're after, you will definitely find it here. Now, when I came here, there weren't enemies at the two houses I just went through. But there's another house that's... It's a lost cause. It's... I don't even want to really call it a house because there's not that much of it left. But I did have a few super mutants chilling at that house. And I'll show you the dead body when I'll get it when I finally get over there. But you do also get some water here, so you can take advantage of that. So if you're looking for a unique spot in the mire, this is a, a pretty decent spot. I mean, you got your water, you got some pre-built structures, you got a decent amount of junk and stuff that you can loot, you got your ginseng root. But then again, I don't know how many people want to move into the mire. But I, I don't know. You have to hop down in the comments. Tell me 
what areas of the map do you guys like to camp in? I mean, I really try to stick near a train station or near the center of the map. And the mire just kills me because there's no train station. The best you can do is stay near Harper's Ferry. But you'll find that location right there. Also, not horribly far from Harper's Ferry. Always good, right? Okay, so now we're going to wrap it up this week in Cranberry Bog. And this location is pretty simple. All right, I've passed by this area countless times, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of you being a spot that I haven't done. I'm going to do this and get it over with. Because it's blue tarp. It's a little frustrating. Now down here, inside, there are various things that can spawn. Beside this skeleton, I've seen, uh, what was it, mods spawn there. I can't remember what mod was there last. But I do know that they can spawn here. Beside this skeleton, many nukes can spawn. I've seen that before. Stealth boys can also spawn here. But again, not a guarantee that it will always be there. So, if you want to camp here for the gamble of what might show up at your camp, awesome. If not, when you're passing through the area next time, just drop down under the, the blue tarp and see what it's got. You never know. You'll find that right here, hanging out, in about the middle of Cranberry Bog's uh, No Man's Land. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'm going to do my best to bring you just strictly raider locations next week, because that was requested. Also going to work on bringing you Flatland next week as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Please remember to like, sub, and share. Later.